Hello, welcome back to Mark's Garage. Working on the 100A. Well, just thinking about working on the 100A. Um, I looked at this last night and I am glad that I didn't really weld any more of it because I think I've gone a little bit low there, that point there. So I've just put um, a plumb bob line, it's just a piece of string in effect, across Right, just dangled over that edge there and I'm just bringing it across here to this bit which is the remnants of the thing and I'm a bit low in the in the middle there look can you see that looks a bit low just only by about five mil three sixteenths of an inch so I'm gonna cut these tacks grind them off and lift this part here I'm also going to try and get a measurement from kind of here down to there and make sure that that edge is at the same height just so you know I'm trying to do my best to get it so it's <laughs> I can't even say if it's right because I don't have another one to uh, copy but at least it's you know the same and not dipped in the middle or something like that okay I'll get cracking on that then and I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Okay, I've cut it off, ground the welds down, and I've just put a tack right there near the end. And I've measured from the light unit down to that edge there. And I've measured from the light unit down to that edge, and I've put a tack. And I've got it just kind of clamped in here. And I'm bringing the string across like that and as I bring it to that place there it's just touching there if I lift it and stop there it's just there so I think that's about right there and you can see that the string is kind of nestling on these um, remnants of the flange there's a couple of little bits that's just the remnants so I think that's okay. So I will put a, a tack here. I'll put a few tacks on it now. Okay, back in a bit. I've done this sort of cut and butt thing and got the tacks in. And from there to there, I've kind of welded it and ground it. Now, I can feel it's a little bit wavy. I think it needs a bit more grinding and a bit more hammering and dollying but I think I'll continue and finish the welding on this piece and I might even weld along there with a spot welder. I think that's gone in actually. I think it needs to be pulled out a bit. That flange looks a bit big now. So I'll have to give it a bit of a pull and then get it welded. But I'll continue to weld this. It's not going great, but for somebody of my ability, which is pretty low when it comes to sheet metal bodywork repair, it's not too bad. I'll stop filming now because I need to put my phone on charge, but I'll, I'll try and get this part from there to there, the you know, up to that up to that stage there. I wonder actually if it might be worth welding this, you know, this piece to this piece to sort of um, just give it a little bit more strength so it's not so prone to moving about. Okay, right so I'll get that sorted out and then uh, I'll bring you back. I've just put these spot welds along here. I thought I might as well just do the whole lot. So I'm going to put one there.
Well, it's getting to be really strong now. It's very laborious doing the welding because I have to weld a little bit and then grind a little bit. Well, for the welding I have to put my helmet on and for the grinding I have to put my air defenders on. So I'm taking stuff on and off all the time. I gave, I gave that a quick... Um, I gave this a quick lick with a, a sander rather than a grinder. It don't look too bad to be honest. It's a bit lumpy and bumpy but to be honest there was a dent here. There's a dent there anyway. I'm just fixing what needs fixing. I think that's actually fixed pretty good to be honest. Mm. Years ago this would have constituted a welding job. But these days for MOT stand it has to be continuous. I remember seeing cars just tack brazed. It was really shoddy. Okay, right, looking good. Okay, I will, I'll leave the camera rolling and I'll do a little bit of this here and then I won't bother filming too much because it really is, like I say, laborious. You, you don't want to watch endless speeded up footage, do you? Some of you will come back and say, yeah, mate, we don't mind. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, oh I haven't done the grinding on that bit, have I? It doesn't matter. Well that that's about it. It's quite strong. It's got the spot welds along there. Oh, I say that. It's actually come and welded there. It hasn't taken along there. Hmm. I'll clamp it up and have another go at it. And there you can see all the welds on the inside. Bit of a mess, isn't it? Really? It's not as nice as um, gas welding it, but the thing is, there'd be a lot more distortion with the gas welding. My friend used to be in the sort of, um, you know, automotive body and white industry, and he said that um, the metal's got to be, you know, just fitting really nicely together. That's why I went and hammered and dollied it to get it a bit better. Okay, right. Well, that was hard work. That there, basically taking that from being tacked in. To weld it in has taken a day and it's not finished by a long long stretch 
still that's what it takes isn't it and I've got to do some finishing around there and I've got oil can in here while not perfect I think it's okay and a hell of a lot better than it was still it was it was an experience for me to try that technique I'm not sure I'd try it again although I've kind of got no choice but to use it again on that side if you like before and after yeah it looks better doesn't it okay righto thanks very much thanks very much for joining me in the garage then take care and I'll catch you on the next one hello just come back from a parts collection caper these are um, a, a chap in Sheffield had these front struts advertised and I agreed to buy those and of course what's, what, what do you say when you go to pick some parts and we say what else have you got and um, what I was after was a wheel so anyway I've ended up buying a set of wheels there's two there and I've just took two out because they're the 100 e wheels and these have been widened and they've got tyres on them that are usable okay they're not very big and they wouldn't have been my first choice but they they're tyres and they are legal and they hold air so they'll do um, so I've got a set of tyres and wheels and some struts and the thing about these struts is they've got the lighter brakes these are the lighter brakes so you can use more easily available wheel cylinders and things with these and then anything else is just spares these, this is uh, spare steering components and he did say that he went and bought that that piece there and it was like 60 quid so if any of my steering parts are worn out I've got some spares there I bought this one because it's got these engine mounts on it and they appear to be in good nick the ones on the car are uh, kind of D, you know, delaminating. So that they're good. And the other thing there is um, a 107 E cross member that allows you to bolt the lighter engines into the 100 E. It's got the like the Anglia stroke Cortina mounts, but it's on a 100 E cross member. That's called a 107 E cross member. So you know, you never know if I do an engine swap, that that could be useful. It's just opportunist you've got to pick these things up when you when you can anyway I'm very pleased with that yeah okay jolly good I've got one of the 100 e struts here in the uh, vice just got it there on the track control arm um, I'm stripping it to get the brake back plates but I'm also kind of saving these other parts in case they might be useful This has got a big long stud that comes all the way up here. That's the problem in here, I haven't got much bench space. I'm squeezing on the bit that the taper's in. This is a Jaguar cylinder head nut. The other side came undone, I hope this one does. Can you see here? Oh, it's just off the photo, in it?
This is what you hope might be a usable spare part. You know, if you've got one that's worn out. Actually, the chap that I bought the front struts from told me that somebody had been asking to buy these. But I'll, I'll keep them as spares. The, these are the lighter brakes, post 58. And these wheel cylinders, if you need to buy them, are much, much cheaper than the earlier wheel cylinders. And when I get the other brake back plates off, I'll have a look to see what the difference is. But it was worth it for me to just go and buy these struts just to get these so that the brake parts are more available. I'd have paid more to refurbish the early brakes, probably about three or four times as much than it's took me to buy these because I got these for really cheap. They also they appear to have replacement um, adjusters fitted as well. And these cylinders don't look very old because they've got no rust on them. Okay, that's the fruit of my collection caper there, <laughs> would you believe? Okay, good. Plus a few spares, plus a set of wheels, plus a pair of usable engine mounts because mine are all coming apart. So yeah, good. Okay, I just thought I'd show you that because that getting that busting that taper loose. I mean, imagine us as sixteen-year-old kids, you know, trying to do it on the drive with no t your, your dad's old tools. You know, it just weren't going to happen, was it? This worked a treat in here. Okay, I'll I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Hello. Um, I've just pulled this rear hub off. I've just pulled the rear hub off the 100 e And um, as you can see, it looks like a scaled down version of the early Ford. You know what I call an early Ford. It, it, it's got direct lineage, lineage back to there. But what I can see, there's a lot of fluid on here. So this must be the cylinder that has been leaking. Or rather, so this cylinder has been leaking. There could be others. So I want to get this cylinder off to see what seals I need, see if I can get seals for it. So I might as well just, well, I might as well. For the sake of the four bolts, I might as well just take the whole thing off. Maybe. No, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, not maybe. Don't know. See what you're up against, undoing things like that there. Quarter inch. That's the brake drum. There's a lot of fluid in it, so I think this is where all the fluid went. Well, I'll see what the other side looks like and what the fronts look like. So I need new rear shoes, or unless these can be kind of cleaned and washed out, and possibly a cylinder. Yeah, okay. It's just a look, see, because I just got those front brakes. I thought I'd see what the back back, back brakes are like. I might as well get this off because it all wants freeing up anyway, doesn't it? Okay, I thought I'd just show you that. I had to get, I'm just going to put you over the back there. See that adjuster there? I got my little blowtorch and just warmed that up to free it. It didn't want to turn, but once I'd warmed it up, it started to turn. So that worked quite well. You don't need to go mad with like oxyacetylene. Just this little camp, you know, little, little plumber's torch did the job. Okay, righto. Um, I'll continue and uh, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Okay, that came off quite easily actually. The, the uh, split pin wasn't um, rusted up and the pin wasn't rusted either in there or there so that came out quite easily. This one didn't want to come undone and I heated it up and it started to twist the pipe. You can see where all the um, sort of this surface you know um, I don't know whatever it is has flaked off and I heated it up and put um, release oil on it 
and it did undo but I think I've put too much twist in it it's got too much stress in it to use it again so I'll but I'll use it as a pattern and make a copy and put some new fittings on so there's just those four bolts there and nuts and that back plate can come off and I can work on it on the bench thing and I can put the wheels on put one of my new wheels on see what it looks like okay back in a bit there's one of the new wheels in place the tire looks a bit small but you know hey for what I paid for them it'll get it driving and mobile without any enormous expense I'll see if I can find some taller ones for the back but uh, you know for now that looks all right I think and that's um, a Ford hubcap a lighter type but a Ford hubcap to be honest what I paid for the wheels and tires is what you'd pay for a set of hubcaps and the hubcaps were thrown in with the wheels and tires so I think I did all right there oh and I've got the, br the brake back plate off there's the brake back plate so I can work on that on the bench but while it's off the vehicle is still mobile well it would be mobile if I put it down on the ground I think they look all right okay right out back in a bit I've just pulled the drum off the um, driver's side which is the right hand side in this country and um, it smells of oil this doesn't this smells of oil rather than um, brake fluid and you can see there's a bit of weld there I don't know why okay so these ones are contaminated with oil but maybe that seal could do with replacing there so let's see about getting this one off as well then there's the wheel on this side yeah the tires are too small aren't they but you know hey it'll get it rolling a little bit, bit of a boy racer style better acceleration smaller wheels the wheels look nice actually I got this one off so they're both off so I can kind of refurbish those and buy parts as needed and uh, I'll have a I'll go in and have a cup of tea and then I'll come back and tidy up later <laughs> maybe okay righto thanks very much then I'll catch you later this side which was the right hand side appears to have been replaced with a, a lighter cylinder so it doesn't nestle in there so what they appear to have done is put a blob of weld on the end of the handbrake lever to stop the shoe drifting this way the other cylinder had this like this so it looks like they've adapted this later cylinder on and used that to stop the shoe popping off hmm, that's interesting isn't it Righto, back in a bit. Hello, I've got the front of the car jacked up and I wanted to take these brake uh, back plates off. So I th thought I'd just sort of make a little recording just to get on record what the brakes were like. There was a lot of grease there, I've just wiped it off. Uh, big strong springs on there. Aluminium cylinders, which is why I wanted those other ones with the more commonly available cast iron ones quite a bit of grease thrown around um, the drum is pretty rusty I think the bearings look okay the bearings look okay I've got it in there yeah so I'm gonna get this off and I'll probably just put the drum back on with the with the um, one of the new wheels I might just have a quick scrape around up here just see what we're dealing with I had one of these a few years ago and um, all this seam here was completely gone and that was actually a lighter car than this one so I might as well scrape that dirt off 
have a little scrape around while the wheel's off. And I'm looking at this, so I might just put those other struts on. But that piece of metal there looks okay, doesn't it? But this big, this piece here, this is a heavy piece of metal. Okay. I'm not going to film because I'm worried about just building up too many hours of footage. But um, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Hello, just done a bit of strenuous activity, getting the brake pipe out, out of that bracket there. Can you see where the, the steel pipe broke? Uh, there's the brake assembly just down there. Yeah, I think that was... I mean, that's obviously a replacement pipe, but, um, you know, it looks ready for replacement. Um, these brakes look pretty well worn. But what I have just... Why I've just stopped and got the camera out is because this car has tubular track control arms. I've never seen a pair. I've had a car as old as this, but I've never seen a pair of these. These were obviously only fitted to early cars. Um, yeah, never seen a pair, so I thought I'd just show them on here. There's a grease fit in there, so I'll try pumping it full of grease and see if that helps in any way. They do look a bit crusty, but you know, hey, you can grease them all up, can't you? And as long as they're not worn out, they'll be all right. Okay. I just thought I'd share that. That they're on both sides, look. So neither of them have been replaced. Yeah, it's very interesting. Never, never seen a pair. Ne never, never touched one before. So there we are. Something interesting. What I also notice is that the steering has jam nuts rather than clamps so this is very you know it's all early stuff which is right for the car i'll um i was going to say i'll clean it all up but i probably won't actually i'll probably just uh you know smear a bit of grease on everything yeah there's a lot of pitting going on This car came from a, uh, a town called Peterhead, which is near Aberdeen, right in the north of Scotland, north east Scotland. So, if you consider that Peterhead is a, a coastal town, you know, that's probably why there's a fair bit of rust all around the place. I'm looking up here now. Okay, yeah, probably not my wisest purchase, but you know, hey. You watch what people do on YouTube and you, you know, you think you can do anything, don't you? You know, you can think you're invincible. Okay, I'll have a little scrape around, then I'll put the wheel back on. This panel isn't actually attached down here. Oh yeah, that's right, I remember now, the bumper bolt straight into the end of the box section there. You can see why I bought those other engine mounts, look, can you see that these are really badly deteriorated? Yeah, so that they can be changed. Okay, right out. I'm kind of, you know what, when you're lined a car and you just start looking around and thinking about things, okay. Yeah, where did I go wrong? You can see this is all just cudged up as well. Looks like that's been welded. With some thick metal. Okay, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. There's the car, I just pushed it out. I say it's sitting on them new wheels with the wide tyres. 
Okay, they are a bit small in diameter, but it's got a nice little sort of boy racery look about it, hasn't it? Just pushed it out to move it back into the garage further back. Just got the sedan out, parked it there, um, and I'm going to push the 100E back in now, hopefully. My sedan was making a funny noise, I think it might be the problem with the Bendix on the starter again. That'll be a shame, I'm not sure I've got many of those left. Okay, I'm going to put that back in the garage now then. I'm kind of, kind of getting to like those wheels. Um, the other struts that I got, I think, had shortened springs, so I might put the shortened springs on the front, bring the front down a little bit. Might look alright. And it'll come down a bit when you put the radiator in as well. Might be alright. Okay, back in a bit. Whoops. <laughs> I was pushing the car back with my back to it, just leaning against it, pushing it backwards. And I've crashed into the roadster. Can you imagine the insurance claim for that? Can you imagine the last time you had a 400E crashed into a Model A roadster? Oh well. I hope I ain't broke anything. I was only going at walking pace, slow walking pace, you know, pushing pace. Okay, <laughs> back in a bit. Hello, right, so I've pushed the 100E back to that part of the garage, and what is immediately obvious is that that table's going to be in the way, and all this stuff here. So I need to kind of clear this area out to give me good access all the way around so I can open both the doors and you know do various things so I'm going to bring the sedan back in just bring it in see where it comes to and find out where you know what room I've got there because now this this isn't going to be although I've got it running and I could get it driving very easily and I will work towards that but it does need a lot of welding just to make it roadworthy so it's going to be there for a while while I work on the, all the welding jobs so that's why I've put that there so the sedan can go here so the sedan can come and go when there's things on that I want to go to and um, you know that makes more sense for that to be there doesn't it it's a cute little thing, I think. I don't know why I get so soft about these things, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, there it is. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting a few jobs done on it. Some of the parts have started arriving that I've ordered, like the master cylinder repair kit for the clutch and things like that. So, yeah, got things to do, things to do. I've got, I can do some body work, and when I'm fed up of doing body work, I can do some mechanical work. You know, I can kind of toggle from one to the other, mechanical body work, mechanical body work. Thanks a lot for tuning in, as always. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for clicking like, leave and leave a comment if you would like to. Thanks very much. Catch you on the next one. Bye. Got your best side there, Meg. This way, Meg. Oh. Good girl.